records. Okay. So this is the conclusion. So we, we looked at a lot of theories about uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1, including theistic evolution uh, uh, or uh, framework theories or pre-Adamic pre, uh, race or pre-creation uh, theories. Uh, we looked at uh, uh, gap theories. We looked at many, many theories like dates, theories, and we're trying to answer why they are wrong, why Bible uh, presents an young earth view. Uh, there are many theologians would argue that earth is millions of years uh, old or billions of years old. And we argue the case, no, it is earth is relatively very young, maybe something around somewhere around 6,000 to 10,000 years. So we looked at the possibility of that one. And now we are coming to the big one out there in the field that is evolution. So how are we going to differentiate between uh, biblical uh, biblical doctrines and uh, the belief the, in our faith and how evolution the religion of evolution actually teaches, all right? So I say it's a religion. I, would, I will explain why I believe that evolution is a religion. It is not a, really a scientific idea. All right, let's look at the notes. What is the significance of creation, the fall and the flood? We are living in a world that is diametrically opposed to God's supernatural creation, divinely imposed curse and divinely sent global flood. And yeah, we live in a world that is struggling with its own chaotic conditions. So we looked at what kind of world where we are, right? Uh, we know that there was supernatural creation. There was, because of man's sin, there was a curse. And, and then, of course, uh, because man continued to sin, God sent the flood. Now, so today, purpose of our study today is to contrast we are two systems of belief, right? Two systems of belief. That is uh, creation and evolution. Yes, we believe creation is a belief. Belief in where? It is a belief in the scripture. Believe that what Bible says. And evolution also is a belief. What, we will accomplish this by identifying what, uh, what the issues are in creation and evolution debate. And then by challenging us to affirm and reaffirm our commitment to God and his supernatural work. So we are going to initially look at evolution as a religion. That's what we are going to look at in the beginning. And then creationism as a religion. And finally, some concluding remarks about the religious systems of creationism and evolutionism, right? When I say, when I use the word religion, I basically use, you know, communicate the idea of someone has to believe. It is a faith system. That is what I simply say, right? Now, uh, here is a picture that is taken. Uh, um, you know, information is given there. Uh, what is evolution? What is creationism? Evolution is actually a humanist worldview. And they, and they have relative morality. That means morality can be changed according to the situation. For example, according to, they would say, the growth of uh, social community. For example, years ago, marrying... Uh, a man, a man marrying another man would be, can never be thought about. But as, as a community is ready to accept certain norms, yes, the morality can be changed. So years ago, uh, it is immoral to have a man and man marries, but it automatically changes to now become a normal thing. It is not at all norm, immoral. Man and uh, another man marries. So that's what happened with the evolution, a relative morality. 
Now, when it comes to Christian worldview, right, we believe it is God who sets the rule and the rules will never change, right? Those rules will never change. And now let's look at evolution as a religion. While many people would disagree with the statement that evolution is a religion. Yes, you talk to a scientist. They would say, no, this is a science. Yeah, because you teach from, from the, um, maybe from the elementary school onwards, that evolution is the science. Right? That's what most of the people say. And you, throughout the curriculum of our children, as they learn, they learn that man came out of monkey. Man came out of monkey. So simply the idea that it is being inculcated, communicated to our children from the, from the time that they began to acquire knowledge. And you know, the, the idea is communicated. Evolution is a science. There are some adherents to some form of macroevolution that would agree with this statement. Now, maybe there could be some scientist would accept the idea, yes. Uh, could be a religion. For example, Dr. Robert Jastro, he was a, a physicist and uh, he was an astronomer, a geologist, stated an issue like this. Yes, this is what he said. Perhaps the appearance of life on earth is a miracle. Look at that word, miracle. And the, the moment you communicate that word miracle, that is something supernatural, it is not natural. Because evolutionism always depends upon naturalism. Everything has to be natural. But the moment you coin the word miracle, then it becomes supernatural or supra. And scientists are reluctant to accept that view, but their choices are limited. So, so Robert Jastrow would say, yes, the appearance of life on Earth could be a miracle. Some, yeah, some kind of miracle has taken place so there will be some people would say yes this is some kind it, it, it's a little bit of religious idea is there in evolution also the first theory places the question of origin of life beyond the reach of scientific inquiry right uh, you know evolution actually is beyond the scientific uh, inquiry beyond scientific inquiry. It is a statement of faith in the power of supreme being not subject to the laws of science. Now, creation simply says the world that you live it has come from God. A God, a, su a supreme being who created everything. So you have verse 1 uh, this way, uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? So, now, if you talk about the evolution, evolu people would sometimes think that the origin of life is a miracle. That, that means, yes, you have a faith there. Of course, in the Bible also, yes, Bible is also faith-based, right? Bible says, God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created so does Bible prove everything? No, Sci Bible doesn't prove anything scientifically. Bible simply declare that God created everything. And we believers, God's people, simply as, you know, accept it as you know, with the faith. Remember Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Right, you know, you know, if anyone come to God, he has to believe that God exists, and so he has to believe that God exists. So the idea is that if anyone comes to God, first of all, the first thing is that he has to believe that God exists. There is a supreme being exists in this universe. And then the next uh, part of the word says he has to believe that he rewards those who seek him. Now let's go to, so yes, we know that, uh, you know, Christianity is a faith-based religion. Maybe you might have a, 
you might have a disagreement when I use the word religion, is Christianity a religion? Right? You might disagree sometimes because most of the people say, no, this is not a religion. It is a way of life. It is a way. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not strictly, uh, you, you know, I'm not using the word religion in a strict sense, but in a general sense that it is faith-based. That's all I want. I'm communicating here. Now let's look at the nature of evolution. Why, why we call it is a religion. Now, not only Americans, but even, even our, you know, Indian, uh, of course, you know that most of the uh, research work takes place in the United States, but even India and all our media teaches the same thing. What? Evolution is a science. That is what everyone teaches, right? So Christianity is a religion. Evolution is a science. So here is a belief system in religion and science. So uh, science doesn't agree what religion teaches. Religion doesn't agree what science teaches. So that is what usually a dichotomy that people usually come up. Now let's look at three facts that tells us that it is a religion. Why we believe evolution is a religion. Number one. Now you need to listen very carefully here. It is, it is impossible for science to deal directly with the past. All right. What do we say? It is impossible for science to deal directly with the past. Anyone who truly understands what science is about knows what it has to do with what we can deal with the present, what we can observe and what we can repeatedly test. So, what is the first dilemma? What is the first problem? Science cannot deal directly with the past. All what you have is the fossils and the rocks that is available now, right? You don't have anyone photographed. You don't have anyone photographed what took place billions of years ago, do you? Billions of years ago, do you know? Is there anyone who well, photographed what actually took place? Was there anyone who wrote it down? No, there was no human being. All what you have right now is, is the fossils and the rocks. That's what you have. So, and all other forms of physical evidence that scientists are now studying exist only in the present, not in the past. Scientists cannot go back in time to directly examine the animals and the rocks of long ago. They cannot personally observe the past or to test it. Scientists are limited to testing and observing things as they exist now, right? What do you have? You have the fossils, you have the rocks, you have some of the things that are available now. You need to deal with the present what is available now. So that is the first problem. So science, scientists usually fail here because they cannot directly test what happens, happened in the past. So that was the first problem. Number two, why evolution is a religion. Evolution is a system of belief. Evolutionary theory is a series of beliefs about the past that evolution is used to try to explain the facts that are observable in the present. Let me say again, evolution is not science because science can deal directly only with what is observed in the present. No scientist can go back in time to witness or examine the ancient world of dinosaurs and the early days of mankind. Yeah, all what you can do is, you see, um, always understand, 
science is connected to observation, right? You 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 take one of the material, right? For example, if something wants to be a science, it has to have first of all, you know, you have a material to study, and you have you need to make a theory, right? And then this theory has to be tested in a laboratory, and it has to be proven to become or to be part of science. But most of these things that are being taught by evolution is not provable, all right? Now, both the creation and evolution provide ways for explaining the past that are beyond direct scientific examination and verification, all right? Both the creation and evolution provide ways for explaining the past that are beyond scientific examination. For example, Bible, doesn't prove scientifically. Bible doesn't prove anything scientifically. Bible is the revelation of God that has to be accepted by faith. And evolution also cannot really prove through scientific experiments that evolution is true. All what is happening is assumption. So, okay, assumption. You know what is assumption? You know, you, you believe this to be true. Imagine. Imagine, you know, they, 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 they come up with a born of dinosaurs, right? Born. Born of dinosaurs. They come up with a born. What do they do? And they, uh, they say, this is, this is uh, maybe three million years old. Wow, three million. Hmm? Three million? How did they get? Okay, they got the bones. What did they do? They, they measured. They measured with something known as C14, right? C14, which is known as carbon-14. You measure the age of, a, age of a living thing by measuring the carbon that is there. But you know that you know any maybe maximum you can go back is about maximum you can go back is about uh, forty to fifty thousand years, right? You know, according to the current scientific model, they say yes, by forty to fifty thousand years, if if a born is Older than forty to fifty thousand, that that means there will not be any trace of carbon. So what you know what they would say if they don't see any trace of carbon, they will always come. Okay, millions of years, millions of years. That's what they would say. But carbon fourteen cannot date anything more than forty thousand years. So that is a problem, right? But they simply assume, yeah, if there is no trace. So it is millions and billions. That's what usually happens. So I'm saying evolution is an assumption. Okay. Uh, now, let me talk about another one. Evolution also a, a religious system of belief. Despite growing scientific evidence against evolutionary theory, right? There are now scientific evidence that is against the theory. Many continue, continue to believe in it with a great fervency and faith. Since religion can be defined as the concept or system of belief that is held to with order and faith, ultimately both creationism and evolutionism are religious views of life. Governments tell Christians that they cannot provide evidence for creationism, right? In school, because it is a religion, right? But they can teach science. Now, the question is, you know, where are the evidence for the so-called science of evolution? Where are the evidence? So, simply what happens? Because somehow in our school systems, 
we have, you know what they say, we don't want Christianity because Christianity will ruin everyone, right? So, so who is working mainly? Satan is working, right? So Satan wants to say, we don't want the faith of faith that the Bible demands. Let's let's bring another faith of atheist. What is that? They are, you know, atheist are you know the believers. Atheist are also believers, so they believe in evolution, right? They believe in evolution. So let's come up with a replace Christianity or what Bible teaches by evolution. So that is the idea actually happened. For example, I, now I will tell you, uh, here, here is a, a picture, uh, one second, one second, let me, let me show you a picture. Okay, here is a picture that I just I wanted to show you, right? Uh, how many of you have seen this picture? Huh? You all have seen this picture, yes. right? Okay, yes. yeah. This is what you have learned in the school. What did you learn? Uh, you you have learned that man came out of monkey, right? So here is monkey. And here is man. Now the question is, okay, man and monkey went through evolutionary process and then became a man. Now, is it scientifically proven? Is it scientifically proven? Has anybody got any idea? Has you, have you heard about this one? Hmm? Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, it's not proven. There are some missing links, they say. Okay. What is the missing link? Which is the missing link? Okay. You know, now I'll tell you. I will tell you. What do they have? They have the bones of monkeys, right? And they have the bones of human beings. Right? So they have the bones. What is the missing link? For example, now if you if you look at the, the first monkey here and the last man, they have rest of the three, you know, these three things. What do you see? Okay, okay, I cannot show you draw anything here. Rest of the three creatures that you might see, they don't have any, any idea. There are no bones. Missing link means they have nothing actually discovered that, can, that they can connect from monkey to human being. Now they might talk about Neanderthal human being, Neanderthal man, okay. But actually Neanderthal man is actually human beings. It is not, it's not half monkey and not half man. It is actually human beings who have lived in cave, caves. All right? So, when scientists say missing link, you might say, okay, there is one link is missing. I am saying there is 90% link is missing. And they came up, they have come up with the idea that yes, here is the, this is how man came. See, I'm saying this is simply a system of belief to simply replace what? The, the biblical doctrine that God created a human being 
you know, they want to replace it. They want to do a uh, move God away and make man as God and bring him at the center and say, yeah, we will tell you what you should believe. We will tell you what you should learn. So that is what actually happens. Okay. So uh, I just simply um, brought this. That's it. So there is, the missing link is not one link. It is the big, biggest link, actually. Okay. Let's go back again. So I'm saying evolution is a religion. Now let's look at the assumptions of evolution. Assumptions of evolution. Scientists of our day are often assumed to be completely objective people, you know, who always search for truth and are completely unbiased. Since the majority of scientists are evolutionists, right? majority. And that means you might ask, so are there any, uh, you know, creation scientists? Yes. I would say yes. There are scientists who believe in the Bible, who had this degree from same Harvard University, same PhD, like the modern uh, other scientists who teaches about evolution. Yes, there are Christian scientists who believe in the Bible because they cannot accept the theory of evolution, right? So don't think that all the scientists believe in, uh, uh, in evolution, no. So since majority of the scientists are evolutionists, their supposed objective and unbiased approach to life is put on a pedestal. However, there is a complete misconception. All scientists, whether creationist or evolutionist, are in the line of Adam. Therefore, they are fallible, you see? What is fallible? They can be wrong. They can be mistaken. And they are biased. Everyone is biased. Everyone wants to say, my belief is right. Everyone wants to say. Scientist wants to say their belief is right. Each proponent of a position reflects a worldview. Right? The main important thing is worldview. Christians have a worldview with God and the Bible. Evolutionists have a worldview without God, without the Bible. That is their worldview. They interpret data according to their worldview. For example, George Wald, an evolutionary biologist, recognized this very point. This is a scientist, right? He's a biologist. He says, many scientists a century ago chose to regard the belief in spontaneous generation, look at that one, as a philosophical necessity. You know what is spontaneous generation? All right. Automatically generates, right? It is a symptom of the philosophical poverty of our time that this necessity is no longer appreciated. Most modern biologists having reviewed with the satisfaction the downfall of spontaneous generation hypothesis, yet unwilling to accept the alternative belief in special creation, are left with nothing. So understand, everyone has got a belief system. And they wanted to prove that belief system is right. But the problem is there is no way. OK, now let's look at five assumptions of evolutionists. I would say five beliefs. Five beliefs, right, in their religion. What are the five beliefs? Number one, what is the standard? Man's mind. Your mind is a standard. Remember, I said years ago, you know, uh, having a man marrying another man could be immoral. But now, it's okay. Now, I was, I was stunned, actually, uh, by hearing some of the 
how news media in Kerala is talking about, um, you know, talking about, it's not homosexuals. Here's what happened. There is a, a, a woman believed that she is a man. You see? Woman believes that she is a man. And there is a man believes that he is a woman. Right? So you understand. Just opposite. Woman believes that, a man believes that, a woman, sorry, woman believes that she is a man. And a man believes that he is a woman. And they both got married. They both got married, yes. Okay. No, everyone said, okay, here is marriage is taking place. And this lady having a haircut like a man, you know, like a man, she's a lady. And she says, I am the husband. <laughs> everyone accepts, right? And finally, you know, what happened the story is that husband became pregnant and the news media writes. Here is the husband became pregnant and some people were People were looking at, you know, they were, they were looking, how can a husband become pregnant? You know, and the news media says, husband became pregnant. You know, how we are fooled. Actually, this is no, see, this is a woman who is believing that she is the husband. And her partner is actually originally a male, but believing that she, she is a, I don't know, he is a woman and they had sexual relationship and, and the husband, so-called husband became pregnant and now gave birth. And media would say husband became pregnant. Wow. And, and finally some, someone was coming for clarification. When you say husband, it is actually a lady. You know, this is actually a lady who became pregnant. So I am saying is that look at look at all the media? They say, you, know, you, you know, if she thinks that she is a husband, a, a man, then you have to call it as a man. Otherwise, it's a problem. Because the standard now is whatever you believe, irrespective of your natural biological origin, what do you believe? What you claim, not even believe, what you claim is what matters. So the point is this. For evolution, man's mind is the ultimate standard. Man determines what is right, what is wrong. Something that is right today can be wrong tomorrow. Something that was wrong today can be right tomorrow. Second, Naturalistic origins, second belief. They say everything naturally generated. You know, there is a, everything is natural. So they, they would say law of nature. Law of nature. And I don't have much disagreement with the law of nature, but always I, would, I want to say, yes, this is a law that is, Given by God. Yes, it's God's law. It's not simply law of nature. Right? It is the law that God has given. Right? In a naturalistic origin, every, everything, that means the idea is that there is no, there is no God behind anything. There is no someone supreme being like God behind anything. Everything is natural. So remove God completely. Third is chance. You know, you know though you people use by chance. Right? You see the word by chance? It happened by chance. So what happened? When you said by chance, you you remove the God. If God is sovereign, if God is sovereign, if he rules, right? If he rules everything, there is no chance. You know, the word chance 
luck. You know, oh, he's so lucky. Hey, this is all. Now, what do you mean by lucky? Something happened to you because of luck, not because of God. You know, these are all the words that is, hey, you know, removing God out of the picture. It's luck. It's not by God. It's by chance. For example, they would say, yeah, um, how, you know, how the life began. There was one cell known as amoeba, right? Amoeba. Okay, I don't know my spelling. You could be wrong. Amoeba. And how amoeba became, uh, amoeba began? How that first living cell began? Okay, uh, do you know? So, do you know how, how do they explain that first cell began? They say it is a, a chemical process yeah. in which the amoeba evolved. Yeah, how, uh, maybe how, how that chemical process began? Uh, okay. All right. They, they say using the using the energy from the sunlight and the process in the aquatic world, the algae which were there, they fused to form the first amoeba. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, some, and another story I heard was that, uh, mm, that you know, movement of the water, movement of the water produced, I don't, you know. So anyway, you would see, and they, they wanted to say, the life, the beginning of life actually occurred simply by chance. From aquatic oh. world, from water. From yes, world. yes, that means occurred by chance. It was not predetermined plan. It was not predetermined plan. If you, the moment you say it is predetermined, then there is a person to determine it. That is God. So they removed everything. Removed everything. Right? And then, so, yes, naturalistic origin, right? Chance and properties of matter is the most important thing, not anything uh, behind, right? Properties, okay, they, they try to measure, that's a scientific word that is used there. And the other one is natural process. Everything has got natural process, right? The way that you see, the world that you see, not only in the origin, not only in the origins, even now, right, it is, everything is going through a natural process. So they, they wanted to move God. Basically, that is what they have done here. All right. Now, what is their prediction? What is the prediction based upon their assumption? Four predictions can be made with the evolutionary scheme. Transitional forms, right? All what you see is in the, is in a transition, right? We are all kind of transitional forms, okay? And uh, the other, another one, beneficial mutation. Some mutations are beneficial for us, right? Human in, in, Mutation is everywhere. Uh, that is another scientific word, right? Uh, you know, the uh, how, how DNA is being copied from one uh, person to the other one and how mutation happens, how changes happens, right? So they say beneficial mutation, uh, they believe in that. And therefore, uh, we have this uh, human beings now. And they believe that things are to be improved as years go more. And they would come, what is that? Uh, you know, they are very curious about uh, maybe, a, maybe you know, human beings are evolve, will be evolved into something more better. Right, more better, and everything will evolve into more better shape. Right, so that is what they say, and therefore somehow come up with the imagination of, of, um, of, you know, in the movies. And uh, remember, you you have some kind of movies, something called as Avatar. Remember, you may know that. You know, people come up say that you know you can now maybe after some time. Why not? You have a you have a um, Oh, you know, maybe uh, you you can fly, something like that, and there will be new species. Right? These are all their predictions. Now, 
What is the importance of evolution as a worldview? The evolutionary scheme has provided our world with a scientific reason for rejecting God and his authority as creator of our lives. All right, scientific reason for rejecting God. The main thing that evolution has provided is this one, reject God and creator. Here is a professor of history, William Praveen, and biology at uh, Cornell University articulate this position. The implications of modern science, however, are clearly inconsistent with the most religious tradition. All right? What is that? No inherent moral laws. No inherent ethical laws exist. Nor are there absolute guiding principles for human society. Nothing. For example, for example, as uh, you know, uh, according to the Bible, sex outside of marriage is sin. Right? Now we call you know, it's an adultery, it is sin for us. But an evolutionary would say there is no inherent moral laws. The laws can be changed. So as, as our, as our um, community grows, you know, for example, we talk about marriage, right? Marriage. Now, I know that, you know, this has happened in the U.S., um, Majority of the population now do not want to be married, right? Now they call something, you know, I heard a lot of, many times in the news, something known as living together. What is that one? Living together, right? Now it is accepted as a norm, right? But imagine years ago, if a, a, a boy and girl lives together, what would the society think? So they say there is no absolute guiding principles for human society. Everything is evolved, evolving. The idea is that God has to be gone. We don't want God or he, we don't want his word. We want human beings to establish what is right and wrong according to their growth. So that is the importance of evolution as a worldview. Now what is the, what is the results of evolution? With all persuasive influence of evolutionary humanist worldview, the values of society are no longer absolute but relative. Remember, relative means in a relative sense, it can be changed. There are no absolute principle like, like you know, God's word. We say God's word will never change. It is absolute. It is always right. But they would say, no, there is nothing like that. So this has resulted in lawlessness. Animalistic we of human life. Sexual relativity. The indulgence of the mind with ungodly images and philosophies. Right? Now you, you ask an atheist. You ask an atheist. What is the origin of morality? Right? You know, morality. And we say, don't, don't steal, don't kill, don't commit adultery. Right? You ask an atheist, do they have any basic basis, foundation for, okay, oh, you know, this man taught us, no. They have no basis at all. They would say, it's a relative. What is that? It's a relative. You know, uh, stealing or it's a relative. For, for example, I listen to a news uh, and the news was saying that people were rioting. You know, rioting, they're, they're you know, throwing stones at uh, some of the um, uh, shops. Right? And they, they took the, uh, you know, the products that were there in the shops, like uh, our is, you know, TVs and, you know, things like that. Those things were there. They took and went. These rioters took that and went. And the reporter would never use the word stolen. Would never use. Because they say, yeah, 
uh, you know, uh, less privileged, and that's the word used, less privileged people took something, not stolen, you know, they don't want to use, because they, you know, for them, morality is ability. So, friends here, uh, here is the picture, uh, secular humanism, now, basically, this is man th man's thoughts, and their rules will always change. So that is the reason it is relativism. This is what evolution, results of evolution, lawlessness, animalistic view of human life. That means we are we have come from animals. Sexual relativity. You know, it can change. All right. Today you marry, how, you know, today, even now you marry, you know, boys and girls get married. Who knows, after some time things will be changed. It doesn't matter whether you marry human being or animal, it doesn't matter. You know, it all related, you know, it will change. Mind focused on ungodly images and philosophy. That is what evolution has given. All right. Now we need to look at what is creation. So, we are saying evolution is a religion. About, about uh, creation, yes. In a sense, creationism is also religion. We will talk about that in Excuse the... Excuse me, Pastor. Yes. Uh, this, uh, now, the, according to this, uh, um, uh, to the Bible, I think uh, marriage, uh, marriage now today, marriage between the same gender is happening in the world. And uh, some people, they argue that uh, Adam and Eve, they were created by God to produce an, an, another generation, but not to stay in marriage. So it is not a, a crime against uh, compared with the Bible because Adam and Eve were created to produce a, a next generation. But this is for marriage, what is happening in the world right now. Which is okay. So I as when you say that one, I... I just understand this way. Yes, uh, the the Adam and Eve were uh, united simply to produce children. So basically, that, that is not a marriage. Is that uh, is that uh, people say? Is that uh, you meant when you know when you talk about the others? So what is a man and men? gets married, that is the marriage. That is not for producing children. The other is for producing children. Is that the way you, is that the way that people say? Yes, Pastor. They are, what they say is that when, when we uh, talk against that, that that is not supposed to happen, but uh, the, some, they argue that, okay, Adam and Eve were created by God to produce, but they did not talk about a marriage there, but today the same gender getting married, uh, it's only for marriage, not for producing. So it is not a same. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it is simply an argument, but just imagine. Imagine, you know, go to the New Testament. There are many verses where it says, Bible use the word homosexuals. And Bible, you know, it was homosexuals. Look at Romans chapter 1. You know, you would say, and what does Bible says? Does Bible accept homosexuality? Right? Bible says this is a fornication. This is completely, it is a sin according to the Bible, right? So uh, the question is, it's actually not a marriage at all, right? It's not a marriage. It is, you know, uh, they are using a word to cover their sin or sinful lifestyle, right? <coughs> um, you know, marriage, according to the Bible, has Bible ever, has Bible ever allowed even, allowed even a marriage between man and man and woman and woman? You will, you will never see. For example, for example, Bible ha Bible has allowed divorce, but Bible has never allowed homosexuals to get married, right? So, because uh, yes, uh, for for God, for God, 
the first institution is family. Family is the first institution. So in order to have a family that is right, in order to have family, yes, the base is marriage. Right. Base is marriage. So that's how God work, has done. And what you see, homosexual, they, this is not marriage at all. They claim, they use that word to simply claim, but it is simply a sin. sin. And I would say it's a sin full lifestyle, right? It's a sinful lifestyle, according to the Bible. So, uh, it doesn't, uh, it, uh, according, for God or his word, I don't think there is any, any, any lenient, lenient toward homosexuals. It is condemned by, in the Bible several times, and therefore, uh, it is simply a sin and sinful lifestyle. Just like, just like, I think somewhere in the Leviticus, I think, uh, sex between human beings and animals is sin. Just like that, it is sin, right? So we, we know, yes, people would claim we, they wanted to talk about Adam and Eve, but um, the purpose of Adam and Eve joined it together. Remember, Bible says, Bible says, okay, let me join you know, by God calls Adam or made Adam, and then, uh, all right, I wanted to bring a woman so that you can produce children. Right? Did God ever say, let me bring Eve so that you can, you can produce children? No. Yes, it is implied, but God says, I am going to bring you, give you woman to be a suitable helper. Remember, there you see what? Suitable helper. There you see the family. Right? So that's the way Bible explains. Well, now it is right. Um, God told Adam, you go Fill the earth, right? Fill the earth. Production, yeah. It's also part of it, but it is not simply, not simply filling the earth alone. Adam has to be the representative of God, and Eve is going to help Adam to function properly the representative of God. That is the biblical idea. So homosexuality is, we know that it's completely, it is sinful lifestyle, right? I know, for example, this, this so-called uh, Anglican church, right? Uh, in the, you know, the Anglican church, they allowed, you know, bishop, you know, look at this. Even bishop is marrying another man. And, you know, that is what, Anglican church has done, right? Because you know that Anglican church is just, just full of liberals, right? Liberalism has swallowed them, not as you see. So, um, you know, that you can see that one. Uh, it, it's a shame, but they allow. And uh, of course, all these evil, maybe it begins in the, I don't know, some of the Western countries. Okay. Anyway, according to the Bible, yes, family is the most important institution in the world, right? Adam and Eve were the beginners of that one. Right? And God said, when Moses made the commentary, for this reason, man shall leave his mother and father and be joined to his wife, like leaving and cleaving, so that there would be families. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's how we need to understand. All right.